ZSL's Living Planet Index is a key indicator which is used by conservationists and policy makers to understand the state of nature and to guide conservation action. We usually spend over a year or so compiling and analysing data on monitored populations and ecosystems from all over the world to construct the index, which we then present in partnership with WWF in the Living Planet Report. This year, the Living Planet Index shows a 73% decline in the average size of wildlife populations. We've taken data from around the world for all sorts of different vertebrate species. On an average, we see them declining by 73% in the last 50 years. That's just one human lifetime. Those declines aren't the same everywhere. In some of the most biodiverse places on Earth, like Africa and Latin America, we see stronger declines. So in the Latin American Caribbean region, we see a 95% decline, and in Africa, we see a 76% decline. Most alarmingly, for freshwater parts of the Earth, we see an 85% decline in the average size of wildlife populations. It's not all declines though, so we have lots of populations that are increasing, lots that are declining, but on average we see this consistent decline across these regions. So the Living Planet is a biodiversity indicator that tracks wildlife populations over time. But some other parts of the Earth system are, are critically important, like things like the Amazon rainforest or the Great Barrier Reef. And we're concerned that we're getting quite close to tipping points in those systems, where as the populations in the ecosystems decline, either due to coral bleaching or deforestation, they'll hit some kind of tipping point where the negative effects, the collapse of those systems, will have knock-on effects for the wider Earth system as well. We need to act now. There is still time, but it needs to be now. And what we should focus on is to halt declines and restore ecosystems. At COP16, countries will have to commit to scaling up their efforts to halt losses in biodiversity. We also need a commitment to more funding to finance these efforts and focus on finding sustainable solutions that work for everyone. And if we do all of these things, then we can set ourselves on a path to recovery. The LPI is a measure of relative abundance. So we might have populations around the world of vertebrates, which are different sizes. We might have a few hundred kakapo or a few thousand starlings, but we want to be able to compare them together. So we measure how much those populations have changed internally and then average those changes. This measure of relative abundance is quite sensitive, and so it can be an early warning of things like extinction risk, which gives us a picture not just of the state of biodiversity, but also predictor of what might be happening in the future as well. When we gather the data for the Living Planet Index, we also monitor what the threats to those populations are. So on average, across all those populations, we see things like habitat loss and degradation are the most frequently cited threat, but also things like exploitation, climate change, pollution or invasive species are all mentioned as well. Interestingly, for some of the regions that are more diverse, like the Latin America or African regions, we see climate change more frequently reported than other regions. We should care about the loss of biodiversity because we rely on healthy ecosystems for food, for clean water, to protect us from climate change and lots of other things. And we need biodiversity to maintain healthy ecosystems. And if we lose species, then we are also more vulnerable to climate change. So in, in that sense, the biodiversity crisis and the climate change crisis are interconnected, so we need to have a, a joint global effort to uh, tackle both of those issues at the same time.